Hi there, I'm Angelix Lucy. Welcome to my video. Today we're going to be making custom binder pages. So let's get started. First off, I will be dividing the inclusions for which I'm going to make the pages in two different categories. The first category will be the pages for which I will only make pockets now and I will make the inserts later. And the second category is the pages for which I need to make the inserts first so I can seal them in the pages and they will not be able to come out anymore after. The second category is great for inclusions which will go in the middle of your page because it will just make a pretty border around them and it will look prettier that way but you could also not make a, a border around it and just do it the normal way. I'm going to start off with the first category, meaning I will only be sealing the inclusions for now. Uh, note that they can come out after. It's just a different way of making. To start off, you're going to need a piece of paper that can fit inside the page you will be sealing. So I use normal A4 pages, so I will also use a normal A4 piece of paper because I'm going to draw the size of the inclusion I want to seal on that piece of paper so I know where I need to seal later on. I do this by just laying on my inclusion and drawing around it basically, but you could also measure the size of your inclusion and measure that out on paper. Um, I personally I'm just really bad at measuring things, so I prefer to do it this way because this way I know it will fit and I don't depend on my measuring skills. You'll see I do this multiple times with the same inclusion. I don't have the other versions of this specific thing yet, but I do want the other versions. So right now I'm making a page in which I can fit six of the same thing or technically 12 if you do it double sided. So that way I can collect others as well, even though I don't have them yet. Um, you could also use multiple different sizes of inclusions on the same page, of course. Once I'm done drawing the outline of where I want my inclusions to be, I'm going to put it inside of the page. That way I can cut on the lines where I want to be able to put inclusions into the page. So next up I'm grabbing my knife and a ruler because uh, that way I know it's straight and I can make a straight line with the ruler. And for me it takes a couple of times to uh, get through the plastic. This is because my knife is a little dull, uh, which I do on purpose, just to make sure I don't accidentally cut through all the layers. So I personally find a dull knife works best for this, but you could also do it with a sharp knife and just be very careful. Now, the reason you're going to want to be careful is because you only want to cut through the top layer and not through the paper or the lower layer, because um, pocket pages use usually only open on one side, so I'm trying to mimic that. I suppose you could cut completely through if you want the page to open on both sides. I find that rather impractical because it will also increase the chance of the page tearing com completely. Next up, I'm going to be taking the paper out of the page again and taping the plastic 
to my cutting board because I'm going to do the ceiling next and taping it down will ensure it won't move without me wanting it to move. Now the sealing process is going to be something we have to be very careful with. Make sure you do this in a well ventilated area because it does create some fumes. And also make sure you only use safe plastic for this, no PVC, because PVC will create toxic fumes if it's melted the wrong way. Uh, like if it gets too hot, it will create toxic fumes and you don't want to be breathing that in. Normal plastic, so poly propylene plastic, I think it's called in English, uh, shouldn't create toxic fumes. It, it will still create fumes, so you still have to be in a well ventilated area to make sure you're not breathing it in for too long. But it won't be toxic, which is still not perfect, but definitely better. When you're taping down, make sure you're, you don't tape over the lines you drew previously, because if you do and you seal over it, it will seal the washi tape stuck to the page, which is a pain to get off, so just don't. So next up we're going to get the soldering iron and we're going to let it heat up. Um, mine cannot be set to specific temperatures, but if yours can, set it to a low temperature so, so it doesn't seal too fast, because you can burn it through the plastic completely and you don't want that. Of course, always be careful when dealing with hot things and don't do anything stupid, like paper can catch fire, so I do put paper underneath, but I make sure I don't go through the plastic completely, that way the paper won't catch on fire. I always have water nearby, so if anything does catch on fire, I can quickly put it out, um, so just be sure you're always doing this in a safe way careful and in a well ventilated area and if you're still a child please ask an, an adult for help because it, it can be a bit tricky and I don't want you to accidentally burn yourself so be careful. Now when I'm going over my lines with the soldering iron I go over the lines a couple times this is because my soldering iron is a rather low temperature and I prefer that because that way I have more control over whether I go completely through the page or not. So by having it at a low temperature, I can carefully seal things together and I have to do it multiple times because otherwise it won't stay stuck, which in this case is better because it gives you more control. It's basically easier to just go over a line again if it didn't seal properly than to melt two things that broke back together. Like, if you go through it completely, you can just throw it out because you're not going to be able to fix that. If you don't seal it completely, you can still just reseal it and still use it. When sealing near the cuts we just made, Make sure you seal above the cut. Uh, this way you can actually use the cut to put your inclusions in. If you seal below the cut, uh, you will basically have one completely closed pocket and one pocket with two entries, which is not what you want. Okay, so now this page is done. Um, always turn off your soldering iron when you're not using it. And always make sure it's in its stand when you're not using it. And once mine is off and in its stand, I'm going to take the page off of the uh, cutting mat and I can put the inclusion in. Now I'm struggling a bit with putting the inclusion in. This is not because the process didn't work, but because I, I'm an idiot, basically. <laughs> now, that worked pretty well. Now I'm going to make a couple more pages, but I'm going to speed up the process a bit so you guys don't have to watch me do every single page. But you can still watch if you enjoy watching, but it's going to be sped up. Because if I do all of this at this pace, it's <laughs> this is going to be an hour long video and I'm not going to put you through that. So enjoy! Now I also just want to quickly mention that you can do this with any kind of shape. Like everything I seal today is some kind of square or rectangle, but you can also do this with triangles or even circles. Circles are definitely a bit trickier though. Um, 
I have done those. I absolutely hate them. But it's possible. It's just difficult. And I will never do that again. So now that I've shown how to do a couple different pages the normal way, I'm also going to show how I do the pages for which I have something in the middle. In these pages, it's still possible to take out the inclusions, but the border around them is sealed stuck in there. So the border cannot come out anymore. So beforehand, I've cut out the border, um, which has a gap in the middle where the inclusion is going to be. I did this beforehand because it's basically just measuring the inclusion and drawing a line on the paper and cutting that out. So for these I don't find it necessary to tape it down because it will stay where it is on its own. Like the line is always going to be in the same place because of the border that is already in there. So I don't feel the need to tape this down. Um, I don't think I cut beforehand actually, which is interesting because later on you're going to see me struggle to get it open because I thought I did cut it, but I didn't. So yeah, again, the sealing process is basically the same. Make sure you have your soldering iron on the lowest setting and just go over the same line multiple times. This is better than attempting to do it with a hotter soldering iron and ruining in the entire thing. Again, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and you're being careful and have the necessary precautions in place so that if something goes wrong, you can fix it. Now, I'm about to attempt some kind of incredible flip here. Like, I twist my hand in a way I wasn't aware my hand twists. I don't know why I chose to do it that way. You can just turn the page around. I think I was trying to get a good shot, but really it's looking worse than it would have if I would have just turned the page. So do this in the way it's most comfortable for your arm and don't try to be bendy like I was. My hand is literally covering what I'm doing here. I, I don't know why I chose to do this this way. I'm sorry. All right, so this is the last line. After this, I'll be done with sealing this page. Now, um, the main thing I do different on these pages, although it's not really necessary, it's just something I personally find prettier, is I have the cut on the opposite side I sealed. Which means that if I sealed on this side, I'm going to flip the page. So I have the back side on the front and I'll cut it there. This is just because I find that looks prettier. Um, but it's not really necessary, honestly. You can just cut the page on the same side you did the seal. I personally just find it prettier in these specific pages. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> now, again, just like I did with the other kind of seal, I'm going to be sealing a couple more sped up. So you can just kind of see how I do this. So again, enjoy watching. Alright, so here you can see all of the pages I made today. I also made a couple off camera because that goes a bit faster for me. Um, 
I always find this process really easy and fun, so it's it's definitely a way to make your collection look a bit prettier and have your inclusions not fall out of your binder every single time you grab it. Now, if you also try this, I'd love to see your creations, so please make sure to tag me on social media. My social media is in the description. And um, thank you so much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you like this video to see more. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!